Podcast. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors Podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to, um, I think we're on episode three now. Um, yeah. Yes, three. We've done an introduction and this is episode three. And this week we're going to be talking about assessments, which sounds like you have to go through a test to, in order to have therapy. Is that what this is, Bob? No, it's, <laughs> that's made me laugh in a way because I'm thinking about tests and therapy and some some people, of course, set tests psychologically uh, and they find people to fail them. But that's another story. <clears throat> now, this is really about, you know, how, do, you know, once you've decided you want a therapist, it's like, how do you find the right therapist for you? Now. 2021 it's where we are today and psychotherapy has got a lot more accessible yes i live in manchester didsbury so if i wanted to have a therapist there are quite a lot of them but the problem is it's a bit like putting a needle in a map you know it's like a haystack really yeah how do you find someone to suit you because therapy is far better if you actually go on the therapist yes 100 percent so there are not many places around that do assessments where you can actually see somebody to talk about what you want from therapy and they can point in the right direction. Very few places around that actually do assessments. There are some places around to do referrals. So, for example, uh, well, I can think of a few places, but not many places that do actually half an hour assessments which point in the right direction to a therapist. If you wanted it have a therapist Jackie now for example what what do you think most people do google a large somebody number... near to where you live I would hazard a guess that's how people go and then they just look at a picture and think I like the look of them is that what you think most people do that's my fantasy that what people do yeah you you just you google therapist near me and then those therapists usually have a website or something you have a look at them see whether you like the look of them and that's it that's one way <laughs> obviously now, not the best that the majority way i was thinking if we look at between us let's just look now that's one way another way is to find somebody to it's by recommendation Yes. So I was thinking my daughter, when she was looking for a therapist, the age of oh God, 20 or 21, even though she was a daughter of two psychotherapists, she lived in a shared house um, and she could have, but she went through us. She could have got recommendations by, from at least two or three people who had psychotherapy. So it can come by recommendation. It's surprising how many people do actually come by recommendation. That's another one. Another way, and a very popular way, actually, though I don't know how many people think this popular, but it is, they go to the doctors. Yes. No, they, they, they say they have anxiety, social anxiety, depression. Um, they often go to the doctors. And unfortunately, well, it's a good first port of call, but doctors aren't psychologically trained. No. So they know a little bit about anxiety and you know, maybe a little bit about depression, but they don't really think psychotherapeutically. Um, and even psychiatrists who really, uh, they might end, uh, end up uh, being heard by, they don't really know much psychotherapeutically in terms of counselling and therapy. So they know a lot about drugs. And some enlightened counselling practices might have a counsellor attached to them. Yeah. So if you go to a counsellor and you say you're depressed, you've got a uh, counsellor then will do two or three, four things. They probably won't send them to a psychotherapist. They might say if they've got a counsellor attached to their venue, they might say, OK, you can go on a list to see a counsellor next, you know, attached to our GP. Yeah. Or they might send them, send them into the NHS maze. Yeah. Where they might have to wait for quite a long time for CBT or some sort of uh, counselling. 
you'd be surprised how many people do go to the doctors first and then they find out that the route to the onwards after that isn't that useful yeah. because they often have to wait ages in the NHS queue. Many GP centres haven't got counsellors aligned to them because they can't afford it. Yeah. And then uh, they often might get some C CBT after waiting a very long time and then they find out the CBT isn't particularly good for them. But actually, where a lot of them go from the doctors, I haven't mentioned it, it's my last one, last call, is what they call uh, Beat the Blues website. Don't know if you've heard of it. No, that's a new one. It's a, a website a lot of counsellors will send you to if you've got depression or social anxiety. And it's a basically an online CBT uh, uh, sort of series of questions and you fill in the, uh, I don't know how many questions there are, and um, uh, and then you go back to the doctor with it, and then they may refer you on to a CBT therapist. So a lot of people turn up at my institute having done this Beat the Blues questionnaire, uh, and they didn't like it at all. So they end up uh, deciding to go privately. Yeah. See, for a lot of people, the financial side of thing comes into it and they go to the GP and go in the NHS maze, as you fondly refer to it, because it's free. It's like you say, it's eight to 12 weeks of CBT and usually there's no cost to it. That, that can be the deciding factor for an awful lot of people nowadays. You're absolutely right. And unfortunately, or fortunately, you have to wait quite a long time. Uh, if you wanted to see a psychotherapist, not a CBT psychotherapist, I don't think CBT is particularly psychotherapy anyway, no, no. a psychotherapist or a counsellor, uh, you have to wait a damn sight longer. Yeah. There are, uh, quite, I work with, or I have worked with a few charities that, you know, particularly connected with the military. Um, that's something that interests me, that, you know, there are funding places where you can access a counsellor for I think it's six sessions you know that, that is is good you know if you're a veteran or ex-military oh so that, 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 that's really good so going back to your first point then you're correct a lot of people put psychotherapist Manchester yeah for example and up will come our website the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy that has got over 24 therapists there. And we have an assessment process, half an hour with me usually, uh, where I will look at what they want from therapy and then pass them to a therapist of their choice, which in other words, match them up. Yeah. So that's that's that way. And see, do you just on that topic, that's unique. Yes, it is. You know, one of the because I made some notes. I'm very good at making notes, so I made some notes. And the assessment process for me with a client is as much my skill set. You know, whether I'm a good match for them. It's not that I put them through some sort of a test. I'm also looking at myself whether I've got the knowledge and the skills in order to you know offer support with whatever they're coming with. Whereas you take all that off them. If there's 24 therapists working in your institute, you can signpost them. You know, the, the gender is is kind of one thing. You know, if if somebody's from the LGBT community, they might want to see a specific. But you know, ethnicity comes into it. Your know, cultural beliefs and everything. It's it's all of it as a bearing in the therapy room. Yeah, and that's why people like the idea of an assessment. Yeah. So they can get matched up um, by somebody who knows what they're doing. So I've been doing this assessment process for about over 20 years, I would wow. think. Yeah. And present time, I would average about five or six uh, assessments for uh, psychotherapists who are fully qualified or people who have graduated and also at the Manchester Institute there's a low cost therapy system where you can get therapy for 26 weeks of 15 pounds a therapeutic hour 
So I might have three or four low cost assessments as well a week, wow. which might take me up to about, I don't know, nine, 10 a week if it's a good week. Last week, I think it was six or seven. I've just come back and I've had three assessments. Two of them were low cost and one was for fully qualified therapist. Uh, but of course, I'm not there five days a week because I do various other things as well. So I, so it, it is quite busy though. Yeah. So people like the idea of an assessment particularly. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's the sort of major way that we get people. And the assessments are half an hour for a low cost is 15 pounds for fully qualified therapists um it's 30 pounds but if you go the low cost routes it's for low income people so it's for students or people under fifteen thousand pounds so it's low income which you know, again, is, is a brilliant resource that you're offering to people you know in the locality i i did the low cost clinic that was part of our training when we were doing oh, yeah. yeah 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 and, yeah. it, you know, it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was good that I was still within the Institute and had the, the comfort of knowing that I was still part of something while I was training. It's invaluable. It isn't. There aren't many places around no. to do assessments for either of those pathways. Yeah. And um, I'm very proud of that fact. So m many people come through assessments. An assessment is quite an, a skilled... Uh, a quite a skilled job, you know, that I do really. And I, I know I've developed it over 20 odd years, but you, you have really 20 minutes to get to find out what they want from therapy. And often they don't know what they want, but they're just there. Right. Many come with social anxiety and depression and stress. So then you need to find out, you know, um, uh, what stops them actually getting to the place they want to get to themselves. And th there's other things you need to check. You need to check up things like if they've had counselling or therapy before. So that'll give you a big clue into whether they've been down that path or in fact, whether they've been in the psychiatric system. Because if they've been in the psychiatric system, they're going to probably have a psychiatrist or they will have, um, you know, psychotherapy might not be suitable for them yeah. because they're fairly disturbed. Yeah. And, Psychotherapy isn't necessarily the right venue. Um, so I deal with people from that frame as well that might be quite disturbed and then I need to, it's a different sort of intake process. But I would think a majority of the people I see are, are what I call the neurotic well ca category or the worried well category. And um, mostly it's things like self-esteem, confidence, uh, social anxiety, depression, stress, stuff like that. Yeah. The, the, I, I can remember the, there was a, a period where I was getting a lot of people that were kind of becoming aware of replaying the same behaviour over and over. You know, keep moving jobs and then getting unhappy and then moving to another job and it not being what they thought and then moving to another job. So sometimes it's kind of when they start to become aware of behavior patterns. Absolutely. And when they have a large discomfort in life. And the other thing to really remember, if we talk about what happens behind closed do doors, uh, is this, 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 A, this is a confidential system. But the other thing to really remember is, especially if they've never come to therapy before, or even if they have to a certain extent, they're pretty scared. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're pretty... They're showing their vulnerabilities. It takes a lot of courage to do this. And so part of my job is to enable them to feel safe and secure and somebody who's pretty accessible to talk to and can help them point them in the right direction, yeah. which is really what I'm doing, but I've had a lot of wealth of experience. And the other thing, um, I've got the Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy, but across the road, I've got the Manchester Institute Wellbeing Centre with another 10 therapists. So I've got a lot of therapists that I can point them to and matching them up exactly where you started right at the beginning is crucial. Yeah. Because there's so many differences of what people want. We named a few of them from gender to cultural differences to, you know, you, you, you're correct. And that's another whole aspect. I have to know my psychotherapists well, or the psychotherapists yes. who, who work through my institute and the wellbeing centre, because 
uh, I, I then can match them up really. Uh, I, I, it's it's a very there is nowhere like it. I know actually. No, I've I've never heard it being that way. As as somebody that went through the training process, it's a very nurturing environment to be in. You know, mm. yeah. Yeah, I'm so, always talking about Manchester Institute uh, of Psychotherapy. Yeah. There's so many courses that I think therapists, psychotherapists, counsellors go on where you're in a kind of a bubble and then suddenly released mm. to go and see clients. And as much as it's nerve-wracking for the clients to come on their first session, as a psychotherapist, I can remember my first session yeah. seeing a client. It was, it was in the low cost. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you, your mind is working overtime. You're just trying to get everything just right before you ease into the process. I used to say to trainees, and I still, I still do, I think, is that when you have your first session as a trainee psychotherapist, folk counsellor, to remember that the client in front of you who's just come through the door is usually more scared than you. Slightly, only a little bit. <laughs> uh, I, I always like that because... I try to remember that it's very important for me to help the person feel at ease yeah. in, a, in that assessment process before we send them off to psychotherapy, because most of them don't know what psychotherapy really entails or what it's about. I mean, you know, it's a talking therapy. Usually it's about how the past affects the present, but it's an hour where people can actually talk about their vulnerabilities. And that's so new for people, even though they know they need to be there for many different reasons perhaps it's still a pretty daunting prospect yeah yeah and I think you know when you're doing the job day in day out it's important to remember that when you see a new client I I only work online at the moment I'm not seeing clients face to face but I always offer a 30 minute similar to I would imagine your assessment where they come to me free for 30 minutes mm. just so that we can meet each other and see whether we can work together whether we can be in a room together you know that's wonderful Jackie because I think it's a really inter interesting area you've now gone into so somebody wants therapy another thing that may appeal to people so I'll be really interested in this since you brought this up is the people that offer free consultancies, like you've just said there. So if you came for an assessment with us, it'll cost £30 for the half hour, or if it's low, co low cost, it'll cost £15. But you do get therapists, and there's quite a lot of people for different reasons, which offer half an hour free yeah. consultation free. And that's, uh, you know, there's lots of discussion about that. Um, in other words, is it a is it, it, it does it actually you know for example what does it model is it actually a good space for somebody because they don't have much money is it a place where they can learn what therapy is for the first time and I'll be interested from your perspective um, your thinking behind having it free. Very valid point that usually because. I'm only on Zoom at the moment. Oh. So it's about whether they can access it for a start. Oh, okay. okay. Do you know what I mean? If if yeah. there's somebody, I don't want to, you know, disrespect elderly people, but no, no. you know, they can phone me up and be yeah. fine on the phone. But then when they try to get so the first it's not thing so accessible, is it? It's making sure that they know how this would be in a therapy. Yeah, I understand. I mean, there's a lot of reasons that I like the idea of uh, that free consultation half an hour. And that's because people often have a lack of money. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they've not had therapy and counselling before, so it's like a taster into that world. Thirdly, it's, it's, I think it's a very generous um, um, process on behalf of the therapist or counsellor. So there's lots of reasons uh, I can see for doing it. And the other one you've just mentioned in terms of accessibility and Zoom, so it's an interesting one, again, about when you look for a therapist, some people might be attracted by the fact that it's a free consultation and that might appeal to them and get them into um, dealing with their mental health, in, you know, get, get them in the right ever avenue, if you like. 
Yeah. See, I might have just shot myself in the foot because it's not something that I advertise. Oh. What normally happens is somebody will phone me up and contact me and <clears throat> can I book a session? And what I then say when they've already made contact with me is, you know, I can send you a link. We'll have a quick 20 minute, 30 minute chat on Zoom and then we'll see how you feel from there. That's so it's not, work. Yeah. yeah, I don't advertise that. I, so maybe I've just shot myself in the foot now I and I might sure. get a load of people. Yeah, I think it's showing you generosity of soul. And I've said before, there's many therapists and counselors that offer that. If you go on to one of the biggest directories for finding counselors and therapists, there is on the net, which is counseling directory co.uk. Yeah. There's far too many. I mean, if you zoom through all those, it takes you bloody ages, by the way. But if you go through the first, I don't know, six or seven pages, you'll find that quite a lot of people give half an hour consultancy free as a way of, I think, you know, uh, uh, supporting people coming into uh, psychotherapy or counselling for the first time. So you're not alone in that. No. And like I said, for me, it's more the fact that I can assess, you know, their needs and whether I have the right skill set in order to work with them. That's oh. that's my, you know, reason for great, doing great. that. Good. So you're, in terms of finding a therapist, let's go on. The directories, counselling directory co.uk is very good for um, finding a psychotherapist in your area. Yeah. And what I particularly like about it is that you'll be able to see a picture of the person, you'll be able to see uh, their CV, and you'll be able to hear what they offer. I really like that. Uh, another really good uh, online sort of directory if you want to put it that way is psychologytoday.com now that's that's a really good one I, I, it has the same process as uh counseling directory but there's not so many there's so many on counseling directory you'll be there for a long time trying to you know searching through them i think what you've got with um you know psychology today um is that it's it, it, it it's it's more there's more information about the therapist and counsellor uh, 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 on that Psychology Today uh, website. And then, of course, there's other directories as well. So people often, if they know about them, or they'll be sent to them uh, when they put their name, you know, looking for a therapist through Google, they'll go to these directories. That's another way people yeah. often... Yeah, I think I can remember... <laughs> When I was at the low cost clinic, one of the things that we had to do when we were working in the Institute was have a business card. Have a business card. Yes. And I can, <laughs> I can remember I put my picture on my business card and I don't know whether you still feel the same way now. But you said to me that you didn't think having a photograph was a good idea on a business. No, card. I still hold by that. And the reason why is because people will project onto that photograph 100 percent yeah whenever they want to project onto it um, so we're talking I don't recommend about that. the counseling directory and everybody's got the picture on that i don't know why but my head went to tinder you know the dating app well no, i do know about it it's kind of like that for yeah, therapists yeah. isn't it it's like i like the look of them i don't like the look of them yeah, they I remind know. me of my dad that's correct. exactly it is in terms of projections. Yeah. So I'm not really one that likes the idea of photographs. Having said that, I, don't, I haven't been on Counseling Directory for a long, long time to look at how many people put photographs on it, but I know there is quite a few of them. And it's the same in psychologytoday.com, they do as well. So there's directories, there's, there's, inst there's not that many institutes and centres no. like ours, but there are some places. Now, I know another couple of centres but they do referrals instead of assessments. So they might get a 10 minute phone call with somebody who refers them to, to, to a therapist at their center without a sort of detailed assessment. So there are some referral systems around. I don't know another assessment one. Um, so those are other avenues. Recommended, as I said, is a high one. But the really important thing is that I think is that somehow it's important to get to a therapist that will suit them. So the next thing I'm going to say is really, really vital. And unfortunately, 
not followed. And that is for the people that don't go through assessments systems, they don't go through referrals, they don't go through directories, or even if they do, they go to a therapist, it's very, very important they get on with them. Yeah. Too many people just stay in the therapy or counselling, hoping it will get better or think it's their fault. Yeah. My tip is that if you don't get on with the therapist, leave them. Yeah. Now, people watching, listening or watching to this might say, oh, you've got to give them a chance. OK, give them a chance, but not not forever, not for, you know, have a certain yeah. boundary amount of time yeah, where yeah. you can see if you can get on with them. Don't yeah. just stay there because you could replicate your history. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I completely agree, and I think that's why I like doing that initial assessment because you get a vibe, you get a feeling. Do you know what I mean? And it's both sides as well. I remember I had somebody who came in last week or a week before, and she said she had some counselling or therapy. I said about a year ago. I said, "Did you get on with them?" Oh, I stayed with them for six months. I endured it. It was not a good experience, XXX. Oh, for goodness sake. So I said, well, how come you stayed? Oh, because I didn't know I could leave. Oh, bless. So I said, <sighs> said, I eventually thought, I eventually worked out I could. I said, well, thank goodness you've come here at last so we can get you to somebody yeah. who really suits you. And sometimes that experience can be enough to put people off therapy altogether. Fortunately, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, That's absolutely too. I saw someone again about a month ago and she said, oh, uh, I said, I always ask, ask that question. See, have you been in counseling therapy before? She said, yes. I said, when? 15 years ago. I said, 15 years? She said, yes. I didn't get on with the therapist. After, I, I did leave after about six or seven sessions, but it put me off so much. I said, well, thank goodness you've been brave enough to come here she said yeah that's why i've come to somebody with an assessment system so i can be appointed to somebody who'll suit me because i don't want to have that type of experience again but yeah. you are right some may never come back yeah and it's a big step it, you know it, it's a daunting step for somebody to reach out and then to feel like they have to endure therapy that's that's Very not it's meant to be <laughs> Not meant to be that. No. And it, it's a sad indictment to our profession. But on another and on another level, not everybody gets on with everybody. No. no. You don't have to. The question is, do you have to go on with your therapist for therapy to work? Not necessarily. But I still think I if you therapy has a better chance of working if at least you have a certain amount of rapport with the person that you go to. Yes, which is a very valid point. I need to say or interject in this that as a therapist, I can challenge my clients sometimes and they don't always like that. But in my eyes, that is part of the therapy. You will only do that after a certain amount of sessions. Oh, 100%. You wouldn't yes. it on the first session. Yeah, no, 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 not at all. We've already got in the relationship yeah. at, at that point. But yeah. Yeah, I don't always collude with my clients. No, and, and, and I think a professional conflict therapist will not do that. Yeah. They're not in the business of just a cosy sort of uh, two years of therapy or something or other. No. And it's, it's, it's difficult. I think that's the other thing. People think you just sit in a room and chat for a therapeutic hour. You can be exhausted. I can remember after my weekend training, I was shattered just having that one hour of you know get together at the end of it and feedback and all that sort of stuff it was exhausting it's it is and i think it's exhausting both ways around so yeah we're getting around i hope to the to to the listeners to say look assessment places do assessments places do referrals yeah are extraordinarily useful 100%. Uh, you know, I do think therapy directories are useful because at least you get to read about the therapist that you're going to and you have some accountability. Yes. And assessment centres like mine, you have a, some sense of accountability and with referral places, uh, which is a good thing. And, um, you know, I, I really hope people listening to this will think about if they are go down this road, and I really applaud you to do this a lot of discomfort in your life and you need to reach out 
find somebody who will suit you. And I think the best places are the places that offer referrals and assessment processes, or at least a directory, or best of all, a recommendation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I do think it, you know, like your institute, there's a certain amount of safety and security walking into that building, knowing that that is the job 100% of the time that you do. Do you know what I mean? The experience that is in that building is, mm. yeah, it's second to none. So yeah, go to Bob's. If you're anywhere near Manchester, check yeah, out. Or, or at least somewhere that's got a referral system or you've got a recommendation. Now the recommendation might come from the doctors. Yeah. yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, so don't just I've put a pin in the map. From insurance companies, you know, the well, yes. If there's yeah. there's been quite a serious accident and the person is struggling you know the insurance companies have got in touch you know, to see but yeah it's not a pin in the map it's not the the, nearest the worst thing to do the best one yeah yeah that's just absolutely the worst thing to do and please don't stay in therapy because you think you can't leave or please don't stay in therapy because you think that there's something wrong with you and the therapist by some god divine right can uh, you know uh, treat you in the ways which you don't feel respectful as a human being? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and, uh, and you know, we we every relationship, which I'm sure we will talk about in the many many weeks to come of us doing the therapy show, we co-create relationships, and there's a dynamic that you know, an energy that goes backwards and forwards in that. It's not one person is wholly responsible for it, but you've got to be comfortable enough to share yeah. some stuff in that room and if you're feeling yeah. criticized or judged or shame or any of that stuff one That's talk about it you are and right and maybe we'll obviously go into this on another podcast and i and i could as i said off air before we started i could talk forever about these things i know never there is another <laughs> point i know we'll have to end soon but there is another point that i may have to disagree with you i don't have to but at least I'd like to have another viewpoint. I think it is the, th I, I, I know enough about co-creation and I, I understand and I agree with you in the way that you're talking. However, stroke and, I think it is the duty of the professional therapist and counsellor to be the one that actually goes out of the way to make sure the environment, et cetera, is a safe, secure environment in the first sessions for the yeah. people who have reached out to be able to talk. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and you know, when we're not just talking about the therapeutic environment; it's the physical environment as well. You know that the room is at a certain temperature; that there's somewhere nice to sit. That you know, it's it's quiet and it's not over here. There's not a lot of background. There's an awful lot of stuff that you need to be mindful of. Absolutely. So it isn't just about a co. It is a co-creator relation, but it needs to be led by the therapist at the beginning. Protection, permission, and potency. That always sticks in my head. That's those are the, the three, three P's. Of, <laughs> the three, three P's of the psychotherapeutic lexicon. That's absolutely right. So, uh, so really, them in a safe space, and and that they can trust that you're gonna be there holding them in that safe space because it is nerve-wracking yes and i i know it will come to the end of the podcast so i really do hope um listeners bear this in mind that it's important to spend some time finding the right therapist for yourselves yeah yeah and don't give up after the first one if it doesn't work out it's not personal try again yeah so what are we doing on the next episode, Bob? Have we have we decided? Are we going to surprise people? Uh, are we moving on? I think it's logical we do that we're moving on to the first session. Okay, sounds good. The initial session. Yeah. I'm not talking about the assessment. The assessment is the pathway or the paving to the right therapist. So we're going to assume that Joe Bloggs now has got the right therapist, has been matched up or at least recommended or at least gone through the directory or whatever, all the things we were talked. So now they've 
arranged a first session. Oh, now we're going to talk about what happens in that first session. Now there is so much to this. Uh, I think we're waiting baited anticipation, but uh, I, I, I will enjoy talking about this. So until the next episode, Bob, thank you so much. Thank you. I shall speak to you soon. You certainly will. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.